Okay, let's get this meeting going. Um, public comment. Well, actually, which is listening to the Planning Commission presentation. So, which one of you are doing it? Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> Brian Tian from the Planning Commission. Um, so I guess we had a, it's less of a presentation um, and more of, there was a conversation at the Planning Commission and it's sort of a offer slash question, I guess, to you guys, which is, um, we weren't sure <laughs> if you had gone through the process of comparing, because I know you're getting individual um, submissions, if you had gone through the process or if you planned on going through the process of kind of comparing the submissions to the priorities that the residents had sort of set out in the town plan. And if you were going through that process, obviously we're very familiar, a bit too familiar <laughs> with the town plan, which obviously went through a number of public meetings, et cetera, last year. So I guess that's a question and offer all wrapped up in one, which is if you are going through that process and kind of comparing them to the priorities the town had set out in the town plan, that's something where we would be, I speak for the planning commission, I don't know who it would be, uh, we would be happy to um, help in whatever way you wanted, or if you're planning on doing that uh, on your own and would prefer the planning commission keep its nose out, we're happy to do that Okay, too. so, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there yet, but okay. <laughs> maybe before the meeting's over. So. Are you saying that there are you would you are suggesting mm -hmm. that as we look at these different proposals, mm -hmm. we see how they rank on the priorities of the planning? No, 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 no not not with respect to the planning commission at all. Um, I think what what we were suspecting you were doing, <laughs> and it came up at our last meeting, and we're very familiar with the document. So not the planning commission at all. The town plan just went through us. And you know, yeah. we helped draft it and then it went through a bunch of public yeah. meetings and everything else. I think we're definitely not saying, hey, run your stuff through the planning commission. I think what we're saying is we're sort of working off the assumption that in some way, and this might be incorrect, in some way you guys were spending time with the town plan as you look at what comes in and the funding and how it fits in with the town plan. And we thought we should probably offer to help because we're very familiar with the town plan. Otherwise, you all might be have become experts on the town plan on your own as well. I'm not <laughs> I'm not sure. So I don't want to presume anything. So no, don't take that the wrong way at all. This no, is I, very I, much uh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I misspoke. Yeah. I, I yeah. didn't mean the planning commission yeah. when I said that I meant the town plan. No, no, totally yeah. the town yeah. plan. Definitely not the planning commission. We just happen to be very conversant with the town plan from having spent several <laughs> years of our lives with it. <laughs> I think where we have been, frankly, mm -hmm. we really haven't been that far along. I think that's an okay. interest. We are mainly been interested in making sure everybody in town understands that this process is happening and mm -hmm. that we need to have input by the end of January. And at that time, I think we'll intensify our efforts as to, we'll have a much better idea. Are, we, are people asking for five times the money that we mm -hmm. have or two times the money that we have? But I think you guys would be great to talk to uh, as a resource, and I, I, I think the I just don't think we're that far along. But things are going to change on February first when we no longer have any new um, proposals <laughs> coming in. Hopefully. Sure. Yeah, and I apologize. I'm sure much as you you all tune into every planning commission meeting. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I haven't been on the ARPA meetings either. So um, yes. When the time comes, it's more of an offer than anything. If you would like to know how where you end up lines up with um, the town plan, we're happy to be a resource. So that's sort of the extent of it. So there's no presentation. I don't know why that. Okay. I apologize. For so the agenda item. anyone that's <laughs> up there on the screen got a comment? Yep. Yeah. Oh, are you? They can't oh. tell who you're talking to. So. How do we, do we have to? Jen should be able to unmute herself. But 
You need to unmute yourself. You have to tell us which one of us, there's two of us with our hands raised, so just tell us which one's speaking first. You. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, Brian, thanks for coming. If you guys are getting feedback in the room, then when someone from out here in cyber world speaks, you have to mute your little thing if you don't hear that. Um, back. I'm used to it, it doesn't bother me. My only comment was um, that I know what triggered um, the, this question about the town. And so I think when we get specific discussions, um, I think the, the proposals that relate to the sidewalk and, um, and the recreation path inside of Underhill uh, Central School are two that I think the, that the planning commission and the town plan have more of an interest in because there's been bigger discussions about now that Underhill Center has got the town center designation, or whatever it's called, don't quote me on that, that we now may have additional grants available um, and that there's a difference between kind of piecemealing, okay, we're going to do a little section here and a little section there and perhaps looking at the bigger picture before we just start kind of doling out money. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, and I'll turn my mic off. <laughs> no, that is that is absolutely how it came up, um, Jen, but that's why I definitely wanted to make sure to preface it by saying that we're not trying to step on anyone's toes. We want to be a resource. So I think it's very important. Um, I'll also just add that that is one of the guidelines we included in the initial application. And I feel like a number of the stronger applications we've received reference the town plan or their alignment with the town plan. Um, so I think our, at least at the start, our intent was to put that process back on the applicant. And then as we said, as we get deeper into making more formal recommendations, I think we'll come back to revisit the priorities listed there. So it does make sense to be aligned as possible. Michael, you have your hand up. I do. Um, I'd also I'd also like to request that everyone mute their um, mic in in the hall. I think I keep getting feedback, and that would be, I think maybe that's why. Um, I just had a, a simple question, and that is, I don't know everyone's background, but I know the Energy Committee felt like it was incumbent on us to join in the committee to to make input and help out. Um, is there? And I don't know, I don't think there is anyone from the Planning Commission actually on our committee. Is that accurate? Um, I, that was a question. Is, is there an answer? Do we know? This is Val's um, story from the Planning Commission. Uh, sorry, I'm turning by phone. I can't raise my hand. But as far as I know, there's no one from the PC that sits on the ARPA committee. I can say that okay, pretty certainly. Yeah. Thank you. That that would that, that would actually have been a big help. Um, I imagine we'll rely fairly heavily on people submitting to 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 bolster this, but um, it certainly seems to me that we ought to try that. And and also um, there was that um, survey that went out. Now, so many things like the survey and so on wind up being motherhood and apple pie and you know country and that sort of thing. So it's everything to everyone, but. Um, nonetheless, it's something we can um, refer back to. I'm not sure how it will fit in probably in the phase two process more thoroughly when we're not, you know, when we when we try to dive more deeply into that. But certainly I would want for one would welcome assistance and insight from the Planning Commission on this. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm this is Val Story again from the Planning Commission. I'm glad you brought up that survey. I'm assuming you're referring to the Planning Commission survey. One of the questions I have to so that survey was a town-wide survey. We went through the town plan and, and picked out priority action items and then put out a survey to the town to rank them and submitted those to the select board. And I think they've made their way to you. And my question now is, should we as a planning commission be submitting applications to the ARPA committee for 
all those items, some of those items, or are those already on your radar? I don't know what their items are, so I don't know if we have them already. How can we know that? Right? We, we have some items, but we don't, we, we don't know if we have these requests yet or not, because I'm not sure what you're alluding to. The okay. ones we have uh, that let, we're aware me. have some okay. connection to the Planning Commission are the, uh, the Underhill Center sidewalk proposal, the Natural Resources Inventory and Mapping Committee proposal. I think those are the only ones we have that have some sort of stated connection to the Planning Commission. Okay, so maybe Emily. there's been um, a gap. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so I was just going to say that, that there is um, that that's a really good point um, in that we do have some of the items that were listed in that, but there were some pretty specific things listed in that survey, and I can't say that we've had an application for each one of those. Like I remember there's something about stormwater drainage and. Um, I don't know. I can't remember the survey off the top of my head, but I can, I can guarantee that we do not have pr proposals for all of those. And I think that who should put in the proposals is kind of a like good question because, you know, is it? Yeah, I, 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 I actually am not finding that all that clear myself. So I'm sort of thinking that if a committee is interested in it, like the, the, the approach the rec committee has been taking is all the things that we have as big ticket items that we need to get done in rec committee, we put in an ARPA proposal for them. And um, we're going to see how it shakes out in the prioritization and how the town wants to allocate money in the end. Like So in the end, like these things might be being funded one way or another, but whether or not they come from ARPA or they come from another source is really going to come from uh, the select board is the way I understand it. The other thing I just want to say uh, while I have the mic here is that I absolutely think that we should have the planning commission involved with this because of the fact that they did that survey and because of their familiarity with the town plan when it comes to prioritizing the applications. I absolutely think that, that we should we should partner with them um, to decide what projects are already aligned with the town plan. And another thing I'll add is that I know that when the town plan was created, there was input from other people. Like, for example, I'm on the rec committee. I was involved in the writing of the town plan also to put in the blurb for the rec committee. I know that the energy commission also had the same uh, input. So there were other people involved in that process. All right. Thanks, everyone. So that's really so helpful. Think... This is Val's story again. I'm sorry. I'm joining by phone and I can't see people's faces. Hi, I just wanted to add, um, it's my understanding that our process has been that we are entirely an evaluative committee. We are not initiating any projects on our own. Everything that we are going to look at, and, and if anyone feel, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but anything that we look at is going to arise from elsewhere. So if a planning commission wants to initiate something the way we are currently structured, the planning commission will need to do that. And we will incorporate that into our evaluation process. Um, that's why I say that's why the Energy Committee wanted me on both to, you know, to bring material to the committee, but also to assist the committee in evaluating things with respect to energy issues. And we did also write the energy, not well, I mean, we didn't write, but we submitted an initial draft of the energy to the Planning Commission for, for inclusion in, in, the, uh, in the plan. So. That's my understanding about the way we're operating. So it seems to me that we we have some proposals, or as Nick said, two right now, that go along with the town plan, but the others don't. So it, I'm, I'm confused as to do the others, how, how do they, uh, how do they align with the town plan if, if they're not in the town plan, I mean. Well, yeah, this was very interesting for me as well. So I think what the planning commission needs to do, if I understand correctly, is if something's particularly important to us, um, reading the town plan, like for example, in the town plan, housing 
was a major priority, right? So it sounds like, you know, that's one thing that came out in the process. So it's, uh, and you know, how you deal with wastewater is one of the threshold issues to housing, obviously. So it sounds like if that's something that we think the town plan, well, we know the town plan was set as a priority, then it sounds like the planning commission might wanna submit something to you all that says, hey, we think you should look at, I'm paraphrasing here, we'll fill out the form obviously, but hey, we think we think you all should look at um, wastewater um, in connection with the ARPA funds. And then maybe that's how, it's a little weird because for me that's sort of, I totally agree with it, the way the process is working, but um, I kind of saw us as a resource at the same time to help you all. And I also, I don't also want to be an advocate for things at the same time because that seems a little odd. Like I don't want to, um, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not being very clear here, but it seems like I'm a little bit, I'm, or I, we are a little bit on both sides of things in that scenario. Well, I have heard ever since this started that we're expecting proposals mm -hmm. from here, we're expecting proposals from there, especially from the Planning Commission and stuff, and yet we have not seen those. So is that, is that because there are certain things that people think are right, but they're not bothering to put a proposal in? No, I think that is like literally just the most basic misunderstanding. <laughs> I think that the planning commission, well not I think, I know the planning commission thought that we sort of presented the survey to you guys and that, and that um, I think we saw ourselves more as a resource, like you were sort of assembling a list and you were probably gonna put some things off the survey on the list and get some things, by the way, I now understand this is not how it works, just to be clear, and that you were also soliciting, you know, other feedback and you were gonna assemble a master list and then I sort of thought we'd be a resource for you to collectively look at all of that, but we are very happy to submit proposals for things that we see as priorities in the town plan. That's not an issue whatsoever and I apologize for the misunderstanding. Okay, so I think <laughs> I think that's important. So it's, uh, you know, the end of the month is when we expect to have all the things yeah. in and um, maybe so if, if you find that coming up with writing proposals for all of those mm -hmm. is troublesome by the, you might want to just compile a list to yeah. tell us of what we might expect from you absolutely we will take our next planning commission meeting which is the Thursday after this and I'm going to send an email to Nick right after this, and we're going to devote the okay. entire meeting to working on our list for you all. Okay. So, yep. That sounds good. Jen also is maintaining a master spreadsheet of every proposal we've received. Okay. So you should look at that first to see if there's overlap. Yeah, so we don't we do any duplicates. Yeah. From somebody for an Underhill Center wastewater system evaluation. I'm sure there's things that oh, are interesting. Okay. proposed by people that you may or may not be aware of. There's another one aligned with housing in the flats and the Habitat for Humanity project. So there's probably existing things. Yes, that that's great. You're aware about, but yep. you know there's proposals in for already. Okay, I will touch base with uh, Jen on that. Yep. Great, well, thank you all. Just met. Other comments from committee members? Anyone else? Emily? I just want to remind everyone that we got the, sur the survey, which will give you kind of an idea of some of those things that I think the Planning Commission was prioritizing. So I'll resend that email, but we have the link to the survey, uh, which may be a good place to start. Okay, Jill? I just wanted to summarize, maybe it's my understanding, but I was thinking of the survey as a way of knowing where the priorities lay for the people of the town. And then proposals that come in are pretty specific with costs and um, timing schedules. Uh, so I just wanted to sort of clarify that and summarize it with that understanding. Okay, good, thank you. Hey, okay, thank you. Wow, we can check number two off. Right. So, next item, approve a couple 
minutes. Would somebody like to move? We approve uh, November 14th minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? So moved. How about the December 12th mi minutes? Second. All in favor? So we are down to looking at the at the proposals, and I think there's, as I see it, there's there's two sets. There's the sets we've already looked at, but one of the I still think one of the important things is that we get somebody who wants to be the coordinator or the point person for each of these proposals, and I think that's going to become especially important when we get to phase two and we need to get information from the people, especially maybe some cost things. And also, um, you know, how, how they go along with the, with the plan, the town plan. I think that's a perfect way to do it. So let's go through these. Um, so I, I think the first one, oops, yeah, Emily. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I had a conversation. I just wanted to follow up because there was a couple that we reviewed last time. One of them was number seven, which was um, the proposal for it was kind of a repeat proposal about safety in Underhill Center. And uh, I was supposed to call and say that um, that person, Laura, I forget her last name now, was supposed to um, or should join forces with the, the other sidewalk group. Um, and when I, I did talk to her and she was like, oh no, I wasn't really thinking just sidewalk. I was thinking signs. I was thinking like a flashing speed limit sign. I was thinking all these other things. So I was like, well, you know, I, I don't know how to advise you here. I was like, it, with this proposal is not fundable as it is now because there's no uh, cost estimates and there's no, you know, no, no timeline, you know, right now for ARPA that's important. It's also not very specific. I was like, if you want to continue with this proposal, you have to include specifically what you want to fund. You know, is it a sidewalk? Is it a speed sign? You know, and then I was like, well, I don't actually know if it's worth your time looking into that because that's probably something the town has already looked into, like how many traffic cops they have monitoring speeding and the flashing signs and all that. I know there's work being done on that level in the town. So I like didn't really know what to do with her. Like I was like, do I tell you to go be more specific about what you're thinking, or do I just tell you to drop it all together? Do I tell you somebody else from the town will get back to you? And then she was like, well, should I call the town and find out about quotes? I'm like, I don't know if we want to be referring everybody to the town when they want to do their phase two to get more information from everyone to complete their phase two applications. Because I feel like the town should be able to just be like, we're already doing this. We're done, or we've already looked at that. You know, um, so anyway, I don't know if anybody has any, any advice what, to what to do with that. I told her I would bring it to this meeting and I would say, you know, I would come back with further advice. Okay, Jennifer is going to respond, so that's good. Um, well, I think you did the right thing because um, we are increasing uh, in the budget. There is a proposal. The select board, keep in mind, has not approved the budget, but in the version of the budget that we reviewed last week and that we're going to review the next version this Thursday. There is a line item for two additional uh, signs similar to what you see when you go down Upper Valley Road into Jeffersonville. Those blinking speed signs. One is going to be placed strategically um, coming into Underhill Center and one I believe will be permanently, I think it's on Poker Hill or Irish Settlement, and then we have the one that we move around. So we're going to have two additional signs, and we're going to we've proposed in the budget to increase the number of hours that we have the sheriffs. So we are addressing that piece. And if she wants to call me, I am always happy to field any of those calls. This is what I was wondering about: is whether or not we should be sending everyone to the town, you know, to get more information, because like I just that's that's the thing and i think the planning commission is pointing this out too is like everything's integrated right so like we can't do things without you know figuring out what else is going on with the rest of the budget and the rest of and this one thing that the rec committee is really frustrated with right now is that we're not sure like yeah well this is an arpa fundable thing do we put it as arpa do we put it in our regular budget like what are we supposed to be doing with this stuff 
Yeah, go ahead. Um, so that partially that's why I'm here. I kind of can I kind of am privy to both sides of that. So like I know what uh, what was put into the budget from the rec committee presentation that I did some of it in the regular budget, which you can see online. I post the versions of the budget before we talk about that. Um, and then obviously the sidewalk piece is, is separate, but I took all of those things into consideration when, you know, so when it, when it's presented, I kind of both sides of this, which is kind of like what I think my role is, is to, is to be able to determine that. So I like what Bill's saying is if there's a contact person from the committee associated with each one of the proposals, then the contact person can always talk to me if they need clarification about a specific uh, proposal too. That sounds great. Yeah. So Emily, I missed the point. So did she, after you talked to her and did, did she want to withdraw this proposal or change it or no. just have us consider it the way it is? No, no, no. She, I told her we couldn't consider it the way it is because it's not detailed enough and that we were going to come back to her with a phase two. And I said phase two is going to require getting numbers and trying to figure out exactly what you mean by improving safety. And, you know, I was like, if you have specific ideas, like she mentioned speed bumps, you know, things like this are there, you know, then you may want to make your proposal that, or you should join forces with the sidewalk project if it's a sidewalk that you're thinking. And I read it as a sidewalk. When I talked to her, she was saying, oh no, I was thinking about like signs, you know, and speed bumps. So she's like, a sidewalk could be great, but she's like, I know that's too much. So I was thinking of these other things. I was like, well, technically we don't have a proposal for speed bumps. So I don't know if it's worth her her redoing this or not. I think what I should do is put her in touch with Jennifer and then, you know, she can decide if there's something, you know, that's missing that she could put in a proposal for. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So going down the list, there was, I, I took proposal two and four because those are two that would we uh, thought might be shared with Jericho, and I was going to take those to the Jericho. But I guess the um, number five, the one for Browns River Middle School, we might as well take to the Jericho also. So I, I will put my name there also. So let's go down to number eight, the digitalization of records. Who would like to volunteer to be the point person? Okay. And number 10, I forgot what this was. Is this, is this also something for Browns River Middle School? But Bill, do we have anyone for number two? No, that's the Browns River um, bike. It's the, um, it's the mountain bike. Oh, okay. That's the mountain bike. Yes. It's You're right. The, uh, the central school. Bill, do we have anyone for number two? We, we've skipped over that uh, on the list that I have. Number two? I'm on. Yes. I'm on number two. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the the um, the the number three. The housing. Number project. three. Oh, I did skip that. Yes. I would be willing to talk to those folks if you would like. Okay. I know some people roughly associated with that. Good. So let's go back to number 10 then. This is the one for the, the bike path around the school. I'm a member of the mountain bike club and would be happy to follow up on that unless somebody else- Sounds good. <laughs> Once you said that, I'm not gonna turn it down. Um, and number 11? Number 11 strikes me as one that I don't know that we so much need a contact person. It it seems that the request kind of violates the 
restrictions of, of ARPA. I mean, it's asking for three employees who will presumably continue oh. to generate salary yes. in the future, and I don't see how it's at all feasible. Okay. Anybody else feel similar? That's number words? 12. That's number 12? Yeah. I, I can't. I'm getting confused. I'm having getting trouble confused. reading this. Yeah, go back to oh. 11. Oh, so what is, it doesn't say what it is. What is, it's Nick Tanner. What is that? So he, he has two proposals. One is the recreation path at Underhill Central School. The other one is about doing an investigation of having town water and sewer uh, in the Underhill Center. So that's definitely ah. one where we need to figure out what, I mean, that's probably not something that's never been thought of before by the, t by the town. So I, that's one where we either need to get back and be like, this is a no-go. Or it's or if it's a legitimate proposal, then move forward with getting better estimates. So we do need someone for that. Number eleven. Does anyone know Nick Tanner? I I'm friends with him. I would I would be willing to talk about it. I have a, an engineering background, but. Um, that yeah, that would be good. That would be good. I don't know anything about it. Okay, I'll talk with him about that. Um, okay. Jennifer, though, I feel like you, you need to chime in here because is this something that's worth pursuing? So, um, this is one where I think because I'm not a member of the community, a contact person, but I'm wondering if I should be the contact person on this one initially because talk to the planning commission and Nick Tanner and find out if this is something that's even feasible or if it's on the radar for the town or is something at all on any radar before we even figure out what he's looking for. And I, so I would be happy to be the initial contact to see if this is a, a, a our star. Jennifer, as I read this, and I did not read it in any detail, it looked like he's looking for basically a wastewater study here rather than build a wastewater system. And I'm not sure how we're treating these, but it seems to be, you know, it's, it's like to find out exactly the kind of questions that we, we have and whether or not they could then go to actual shovel ready construction is another question. Okay, it's, all just, the, it's just the proposal. Or sorry, just the it's just the study, not the actual doing. But I'm not sure I understand the point of doing a study if we don't really have a proposal of what it is we want to do. In other words, if you say we want 200 housing units, then you have a wastewater study that's commensurate with that. Um, lacking, maybe the town has a, a grand plan for this, but. What exactly are we proposing to study if we don't have a specific proposal of what it is we want to do? Well, well, I thought he was talking about a specific section in town. What about it? Creating wastewater for, for like the the area that's considered Underhill Center. I understand, but if you don't have a plan, whether you're going to have a thousand units or twenty units, oh, I two see. Entirely different. You know, like what do you study? But as, a as no, yeah, I think as such part of the town plan, their plan is to make a town center out of Underhill Center, like a proper town center with more people living in the center. Right? This is what he's saying that there, it is in the town plan, or there's some talk of this happening. If that were to happen, there would need to be water and sewer because they can't put any more people there unless you deal with the water and sewer issue. That's how he sees it. I don't know the history. No, I think that I think that's true. I'm just saying that I'm not sure whether we have the cart before the horse or not in that the town may need a proposal to say this is what we're trying to do before you try to fi figure out if it's feasible or not. So I think this is all the more more reason to have a contact person to get with him and clarify 
what he wants and, and whether it meets our criteria of doing it. I, I concur in that. And I think it would be really worthwhile to loop the planning commission into this one in particular, because what, how exactly we're going to be handling that development process. I mean, we see what Jericho went through to try to deal with the Riverside, um, their Riverside ideas and that sort of thing. Um, it is a big question. Um, and I would say rather than a cart and horse problem, it's kind of a, a dialectic or around and around in circles as you, you know, you look at possibilities and look at what you can, I mean, basically, yes, a wastewater study needs to have some sense of um, what you're trying to serve. Um, however, um, the notion of developing something to serve something is also a very worthwhile part of that process. So um, I don't think that it would make a lot of sense to throw it out um, at this stage, but maybe the planning commission would want to bring its own ideas to the table and make a larger more comprehensive vision out of this that um that ultimately kind of decides how we want to handle that um i, I think that that's been something very much on my mind as we think about development in our centers um, everybody says put development in the centers yeah 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 but that as soon as you start trying to do it, a lot of people say, gee, we have this beautiful center and we don't want to mess it up. So that that question is a very big one. And I think that I hope the Planning Commission would be in a position to address that. So, Michael, does that imply that you still want to stay as contact person and contact him with all that for all that information? I think Jennifer is the ideal person under the circumstances. I would offer any assistance back backstopping on that um, if there, if I could be of any help on that. Okay. But um, I think her position and role would be ideal in this for the moment. Okay, done. Jennifer, and you're on. I'm on for that. And I, I just wanted to say, I thought this right now, we were really just looking at contact names and not going through them, right? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Moving on to, um, well, sir, so, so, so now we're, this is a good discussion getting into those that we haven't discussed before. The next one being the um, Randy Clarks. So actually be, be, before we got all of you in as, we were trying to get in. We were commenting on some of these proposals, and this this was one because this definitely is uh, requires new people and continued um, continued funding. But anyway, we still should have a contact person that at least talks to Randy about where we are. I don't mind being that person, but does anybody think that this proposal fits in our um, mission? Because I think it pretty much violates everything. Well, you know, I agree with that. Yeah. Anyone else? Anybody else? I would think the one thing we could offer to Randy is if, if this is a budget item he foresees being added to the town budgets, is there a proposal he'd like to submit for like, are there one-time recruitment or training costs that the fire department would need to fill these positions? But certainly I think as is, it doesn't, it doesn't align with any of our goals or priorities, but. Good idea. You know, there may be a way we could contribute, uh, though certainly not as proposed. Okay, now I, I'm sure that um, number th 13, everyone's going to jump up and say, I want to do this one. <laughs> so, again, um, I, I think this is the kind of proposal where it's important that one of us talk to, talk to them and explain, um, you know, what, 
not so much of what we're looking for, but what the requirements are for the uh, for proposals. Who would like to do that? Okay. I'm happy um, once we discuss this um, proposal, I'm happy to reach out to talk. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. So what, am I taking Randy Clark then? Yes. Okay. And I'm just guessing that, Roy, you want uh, the, the next one also. Well, I, I do have strong feelings about it. Um, I think it's sort of the, a, a classic bad business case. Um, but, but we're not doing deliberations now. I, I understand the proposal, um, but I don't <laughs> know that we're we're, we're arguing. Or if we're arguing merits, I think it's it's a bad. It, 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 the business case doesn't make any sense whatsoever. The cost of doing the roadside mowing is on the order of twenty some thousand dollars a year. The equipment will cost two hundred thousand dollars a year. Need somebody to run it. The equipment would be left uh, not working for the vast majority of the year. Uh, it seems much more economical to do what we're doing now, which is to um, to have a vendor do it. Somebody come in and mow, and we pay them money, and uh, it's it's in the budget, and it is not something that we would want under any circumstance to spend $200,000 on, I don't think, unless I'm missing something. I, I think this is a perfect example of a case where when we get to phase two, discussing on phase two, all of those things will come up and, and we can vote on it. And, I, and personally, I don't think there's a whole lot of, uh, that, that you have to go talk to Kurt about it because he knows all the things that you just said. Roy, you should be the contact on that one. And um, when we get to the discussion later on in this meeting, I think it will become clear. Okay. I think Jennifer said that she was going to do it. Right, Jennifer? <laughs> Anytime there's a smile and the head shading, yes, we we know she's on. And the last one. Bill, that one's. Go ahead, Jennifer. <laughs> I know what you're going to say, so. I, I think that one's all you, Bill. <laughs> Excuse me? You keep cutting out. That's why I can't. I can't. What was your last comment, Jennifer? I said I think that that one is all you, Bill. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll tell you what. You can put my name down next to it. Okay. So, go ahead, Roy. We understand. No, turn it on. Turn it on, Mike. There isn't any question. We understand um, yeah, we, Michael's proposal. Right? Yes. We don't need any clarification on it. No, we even know the cost. So do we even need a point? What, what is the point person going to be doing? Um, iterating we, these during phase two discussion. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have gone through these the last ones is there any other discussion of, about them I if, if people want to make comments I certainly don't so very good so I think um, oh Jennifer go ahead um, so are we now gonna go back through them all and talk about the status sure Because I do have comments about a few of them, but I bring them up when we get to them. So I think we're starting at number ten, then, right? Is that the first new one? I believe so. Yeah. 
which is is one of the net tanner ones uh this is jennifer can i on one of the ones from the first session or the second session i'm sorry I missed that you broke up um is Val still on the line? Val, are you still there? No. Okay. Um, I wanted to make a comment on um, number ARPA number six, which is the Natural Resource Inventory Mapping Committee. Um, that is on the budget for this year. So I see that Nori is the contact on this one. So unless they are looking to spend more than the $12,000 that they had requested prior and is in the budget version three that's going to the select board this Thursday night at the meeting, um, I don't believe that, that ARPA funds would be um, you know, used for that mapping. So, in other words, well, all, all we need to do is wait till after Thursday night to see what the status of this is as far as using, using our performance for it. So are there any other proposals that you'd like to discuss? And Do we know of any more incoming proposals? Anything that, um... <laughs> well, just a minute. by that, do you mean, have, has somebody said, oh, I'm gonna put in a proposal, but it hasn't showed up yet? If that's, if that's your question, yes, there's, People saying they're still going to put them in. Okay. That's my question. Yep. This is Jennifer. We do have, I received uh, two in email today, I believe. Um, I didn't even read them yet. So we did receive two today, and I know that there's one forthcoming in the next week and a half or so from the town hall. Okay. I, I know Energy Committee is is working on some uh, a couple of ideas that we would like to finalize. Um, that's why we're not going to be meeting this week, so we have a chance to actually bring it to the committee before the next, before the deadline. Um, also, I was going to ask whatever happened to Casey's Hill. Is that uh, just gone away? I know we are no longer racing to to beat the winter, or is that something that the town has uh, not just not doing? Or does anyone know anything about that? Go, Jennifer. Um, so the, we, we got authorization from the select board to just do it. We actually bought the culvert and paid for it um, as a town. And then um, Nate was authorized to um, bring fill in as they have extra fill. And then in the spring after, um, after mud season, they were going to start to just kind of add to it and um but it's not a specific um project however it is my understanding that we had a culvert collapse last weekend in the storm and the culvert for casey's hill i believe was used to replace an emergency uh collapse of a culvert so we're now i believe back to square one with that so it's it's not on here anywhere I will talk to Brad and see if he wants to redo a proposal to submit. So, other other comments about other other uh, proposals that we have on. Now, there's a couple things, if. 
are, are we going to uh, be real strict about this January 31st date? And the reason, the only reason I ask this is obviously we're going to meet after January 31st, and if a proposal comes in February 5th, you know, are we going to accept it? It strikes me at some point, I think we need to draw a line. Otherwise, I mean, we start phase two deliberations and a lot of what we decide uh, has to be dependent on how much money do we have left and how many, you know, con how many concrete dollar proposals are there. So, I mean, I would, I would say so unless there's some extenuating circumstances that it would be good to limit that. Unless we know someone's coming and they can't get it in on the 31st and it's coming on February 2nd, that, you know, we can be flexible on that, I suppose. Other comments on that? Michael? Yeah, it, it seems to me that until we have our meeting, we have at least, you know, we, we don't put ourselves behind any eight balls. I would say after we had our first meeting, after the deadline, we um, would, would need to move on. But certainly, I mean, if if we want to, I'm not saying we need to, but um, just from the point of view of internal stuff, we wouldn't need to be too rigorous until we actually have that meeting, I don't think. So the, um, the next meeting then is in February, which would be when we start phase two discussion. And what, Let's have an idea of what we're going to do to start fate. Well, just a minute. Before we do that, I think I screwed up on public comment. Jerry, did you have something you wanted to raise in public comment? Jerry Adams? Your mic is off. Yeah, there was uh, two questions, and I got an email from Bob Stone addressing those, and uh, I believe they've been forwarded to you. One was the roof on a town garage, and the other one was a, a situation for emergency generator. Um, and I think, in general, both of those issues have been addressed. But that's all I know about it. So when you say addressed, that was that they don't they they don't need to be put into a proposal for ARFA funds. Yeah, I think they would be. I think they're uh, good candidates. Um, the roof has been a, the problem with the roof is it's, it can, the roof insulation contained a lot of water for a long period of time. And I, nobody, as far as I know, has looked into the structural integrity of that roof. And I believe that that's part of what was to be done. It was my understanding that they would do one bay at a time. Uh, apparently, they're going at it from the inside, which is uh, cluttered up with uh, pipes and ducting and whatnot. Um, the other proposal was to go at it from the outside. It's my understanding that they're going to go at it from the inside, one bay at a time. And that's, that's about all that Bobby Stone told me. Um, I believe they bought a generator. Um, but they don't have any kind of a hookup for it or, or what's involved. And I, something that I didn't mention to Bob Stone was if the roof either has to be improved or is strong enough, it's an excellent place to put a, a solar. Um, it is on a, an electric co-op and I obviously don't know, you know what the financial benefits of it are. But it's something that it's something that a structural analysis should look into. So, Jerry, is there somebody that is going to just take the time to put in a proposal for these two projects, which I would think would be two different proposals? Yes, two different proposals. Um, I don't know. Um, I believe the select board is working on both of them. Do you agree with that, Jennifer? The generator piece um, we're working on, I had 
we did buy an emergency generator. That was because we were in an emergent situation. Um, but we also have um, had several, to be specific, electric company out one today, last week, to look at um, whole building generators for both town hall and the garage. So we expect an proposal for that. Um, I know that there's a proposal for solar at the town hall, but I know that the roof project is, um, it is my understanding that the highway infrastructure committee is discussing how they want to move forward with that roof project. So the generator, I know we're dealing with now and that you should see a proposal for that 30,000 of which has already been voted on for from the residents back in 2015. So we have 30,000 in a reserve fund towards the generator for the town garage. So they probably, the, the ARPA request will only be for uh, another, I don't know, probably about 10 or 15,000 to cover the difference. I wouldn't, I would think the 30,000 would cover it. I would, it did back in 2015, but, um, the generator itself now without the connections and the electrical work i believe is like thirty-eight thousand. but i'll have the quotes by the end of this week and what about the roof jennifer that's something that the highway infrastructure committee they're meeting i think right now in town hall um or no i think they're in the schoolhouse because there's three other meetings um they should be discussing that and how they want to move forward about hiring someone but i will follow up on that jerry and um and see that it keeps moving in that in the direction of some in some direction <laughs> i guess that covers it so so jerry you heard us discuss about uh the january 31st deadline for proposals in there and if you, I know you've looked at these proposals, you know that they're not real detailed or anything. So I, I would suggest you really, you or somebody else gets on it and, and just submits one. And we'll, we'll assign somebody to work with you on what's needed next. Because I, I, I really I strongly suggest you do this so that we can take it up in phase two. I'll work with Jerry on that. Okay, thanks. I didn't realize it was addressed to me, <laughs> but yeah, I can work <laughs> on it. I don't know where to start. We'll help. So you. Jennifer's a good bet. <laughs> so come February, we're going to sit down and start phase two. Um, I've been thinking a lot about phase two because I think a, besides the fact that we're going to make sure that we look at things that go along with the town plan and everything, there's a lot of subjective decisions to be made. And I think when, when which is really the very first phase of doing this is, is us discussing why we think that this a proposal is good or not so good and and it you know could could be sort of both you might have both things but after after we we discuss it that way i i think we can then sort of put put each proposal in one or two or three categories I mean, we know one category is, you know, no way. And another category is, yes, we want to do it. We don't know what the, the dollar amount is, but we really want to do that. And then the others, you know, are in the middle someplace. And a lot of the, a lot of decisions about those that are in the middle will determine on how much money we have left over. So I think that the discussion in February is going to be more around, you know, what your feelings are, right? Yeah, we're kind of in a in a really in between situation right now. As I look at the proposals that we do have, 
and a number of them that I think we are very negatively inclined against were kind of undersubscribed at this point. Yet we think and know that there are more things coming, but it's, it's just really hard to say how you approach any of this when we don't know whether people are asking for three times the dollars that we have or two thirds the dollars that we have. Um, it, entirely different discussions. Well, I think a lot of that is why we need somebody. There has to be a discussion with, with these people to, to sort of come up with a, a better understanding of, of how much money they're looking for. Sure, but I mean, I look at what we have currently. Yes. <laughs> and, and I don't think we have, I don't think we have, um, exactly. I don't think we're close to it. I'm I don't think we're going to have to worry about that too much. <laughs> Maybe not, but it's really hard to say what are we going to do next when we don't have any of the information that we need to move forward until the end of the month, right? It's uh, we're we're stuck. We can't just guess at how much more is coming in. We have to wait for concrete proposals. I do think it's worth considering what our end product is. What is the thing that we're going to be communicating to the select board? Because ultimately, we're not approving or rejecting projects. Um, the way I'm thinking about it is we are we have two roles. One is to ensure that people who are applying have fully thought out and well-informed proposals that the select board can be in a position to quickly approve or not. And the second, I think, is us coming up with an initial prioritization. And even if it's as simple as we categorize some of these proposals as high priority, some as medium, some as low, and some as not recommended, um, it doesn't actually matter what the total dollar amount is. You know, we know that the select board has other things that they would spend this money on <laughs> uh, if there is left over. Um, so I think regardless of the total dollar amount spent, if what we're aiming for as a final product is just providing a recommendation to the select board of, based on all the information we've gathered, this is what we think the town would prioritize with these dollars, it, it frees us up a little bit of getting into the nitty gritty of how much money are we spending versus not. So to put it another way, we really don't have to spend all $650,000. I know, nope. I'm sure. We can go. <laughs> Free money doesn't uh, get unspent uh, <laughs> usually. So, so um, our next meeting date, the second Monday in February, is February 13th. I am not going to be here. Um, I got a very important uh, project in Colorado to ski for 10 days. So uh, that has a lot of priority over this. So would you, do you want to um, still do it on the 13th or do you want to wait and do it a week later when I'm back? Well, somebody else have one opinion. The following week is the 20th. Uh, yes. Monday is President's Day. Um, which I know for many people, they are out of town. I believe that's also a federal, a recognized federal holiday. Is it not? Yep. Uh, I think I'm fine with either day. I think I would be all right with it. Um, I, I personally, I for one would like to have Bill here, especially since he's been going to be instrumental in talking to people about a number of these projects, particularly with Jericho. I'm on the road, but I would hook in on that subsequent um, Monday, if, that, if that's helpful, whatever works for other people. 
Do you have an opinion, Jill? I'm flexible either way. I would say that I would like to build on the 20th. Oh, okay. So is it okay to change it to the 20th? Any objection? Okay. If, if you have an objection later on, you can always bring it up later. Write your congressman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so anything else to bring up today? I'm sorry. I, I have a like question. Sure, go ahead, Emily. Okay, I just have a question about what's going on here today because I feel like we need to, um, like in order for the people who are assigned to each one of the projects, in order for them to be able to uh, like follow up, we need to discuss each one of the proposals. So I feel like some of these we kind of brushed over really quickly without actually asking, like thinking about what the follow-up questions are. Are the people who are assigned to it just supposed to come up with those themselves? I'm I'm sorry, I'm I'm not sure what your uh, exact question is. So my question is like in the past we've kind of discussed them. Like the one that I followed up on this last time was the one about the safety in Underhill Center, and we talked about what you know whether that was fundable or not, and what we should do to go back to the person. Now I feel like some of these weren't discussed. Like for example, the path at UCS, um, the recreation path. We like you know brushed over it really quickly without actually coming up with like specifics for what other information we need to get from Nick Tanner, for example. Um, so you know I feel like a bunch of those today we didn't really do that. I don't know. I mean some of them we did, but some of them we did not. So I just wondering if we need to do that. I thought, for example, though that particular proposal was pretty clear and straightforward they were asking for what eighteen thousand dollars and i don't think it needs any clarification unless i'm missing something does it i thought it was one of the better written from that point of view okay so some of these we don't necessarily need to do anything with until the other actually there's another one that we didn't really discuss is the sidewalk proposal from isabel tuck well I'm thinking that when you talk to these people, one of the things is is that you want to talk to them from the point of view that you need the information in order to um, come to the meeting, to, to, to the phase two discussion in such a way that you can present something positive about this. I mean, that's the whole point is that you're going to do it. Now, if obviously, Positive isn't necessarily right because you may come away with your discussion that it's a, a negative thing, but whatever information that you feel people need. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That that that's helpful. I mean, like through the sidewalk one, um, Nori sent me some, um, like an, an email talking about you know some recommendations i just don't then that's gonna i have a rec committee meeting this week or next uh actually next week and i don't don't know what to go back to them with like i don't know how much more information we need um because like there was some suggestion like oh well this should be the proposal this should, proposal should be all the way to um should include a plan going all the way to the center or not whether or not they should focus on the path that part they can build now whether or not it needs to be like written more professionally like these are all, all like this is feedback that i've gotten i just don't know if we have a collective idea of what i need to get back to them with in order to make this a phase two or to make are it you phase emily uh are you the contact for the sidewalk proposal i, I don't even know am i the, the other thing is can we add a, a column to that spreadsheet do we have that yet that it assigns each person the only one i knew i had to follow up on was the safety one which was the other sidewalk proposal which was not really a sidewalk but i don't think so we assigned that, that one did we 
I mean, it makes I, most sense for me to follow up on it. I think but. you're that one. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, and so now I just, I'm not really sure where to go with that one because that one's being sort of collectively written by the, the rec committee. You know, I know that there's involvement of the town already. I just don't really know what we need. I don't know how much work we need Isabel to put into it in order for us to be able to consider that, I think is where I'm not clear. Well, a couple of things, Emily, is number one is I think it's, it's for the the person who wrote it to come up with a dis decision about how much they want to do and the sidewalk is a great example do they want to to propose sidewalks everywhere or small places or something like this and then as far as the the cost comes well <laughs> you know i don't think you know how to generate that and I don't know how to generate that, so it, it's going to be a it's going to be one of those things where the person that's doing the proposal has it, it's their responsibility to contact somebody and, and to come up with a number. Wasn't this proposal to do the surveys for this? Well, so it isn't it isn't build the sidewalk. It's um, do, do the survey work and preliminary engineering associated with that right. so that that it's a pro it's a proposal to answer the questions that people are currently asking which seems yes. to me to be the, the kind of the way to do it it makes sense to loop um planning in with it and to see if they ask them if there's a and i haven't kept up but um regional planning does a lot of these studies um initially and it'd be worth contacting them um, they should do that um it shouldn't be up to you to be running around and doing that but no um, that's what i'm saying but like this one i know had has multiple ways it could go in terms of what what feasibility to look at sorry there's a lot of feedback and i just i'm not really sure where where we need her to go like you had had quite a lot of comments. I'm happy to take those to the committees. I think they were good comments. I just I don't know if I should be doing that or not, you know. Uh, anyway, I think anyway, we can help out people on these things, you know, is, is worthwhile. Um, okay, so I'm going to forward your comments to the slash Isabel. Great. I'd be glad to take a look at that for you if you would like. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I'll, I, I mean, I'll send them along and see what they say. I, I know that there's other things going on too behind the scenes, but that's going to be tricky. So, what? Are, oh, the other thing I was going to say about that proposal is that can you guys turn the mics off. Okay, so the other thing I was going to say about that uh, proposal was that, um, oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Uh, sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. I'll get, get back on when, when I mean when I uh, when I can think of it again. Sorry. Sure, but it seems to me ask, ask Isabel to like go to regional planning or go to um, the town hall folks and say, you know, are there studies that this is based on that we can feed yeah, into okay. this? Sorry, that's uh, what I was. But thinking. it's not. Yeah, it's not for you to chase that down. Right. But you can certainly say to her that there are studies that do this, and if you're doing the the engineering, preliminary engineering, and surveys associated with it, that answers some of the questions that we are asking now. I think. Right, and the other thing I was going to say is that she actually does have a very nice presentation that she presented to the select board about the rationale for the sidewalk. And I haven't seen that come through to this committee, but that I think is important because that shows like, for example, what the other funding is that's available, what the thought is of the feasibility study and how it would connect to building and how it would connect to a multi-use path to the center. I mean, that's public support. Like she interviewed all the neighbors, for example, she got comments from the neighbors. I actually think that's important input to decide on this. I just don't know. Um, I haven't seen it come through to this committee. So that's the other thing I'm wondering is if I'm allowed to ask her to circulate that to this committee. Jennifer has her hand My. raised. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say um, that this subject of the sidewalk came up this week at the planning commission meeting. Um, Nick's, it's on Nick's radar. Nick went to a CCRPC meeting on Monday. He, I think he and Isabel 
should definitely connect. So I think Isabel needs, it, it's time for her to reach back to the town hall staff because Nick spoke to, to the CCRPC all about um, feasibility studies and because we're a designated town center, other funds that are available if we were to do a feasibility study. And um, I think if they put, that that would be where she should go to first because Nick's got a real good handle on that. Sorry, dumb question. Nick who? Nick Atherton, our um, town planning and zoning administrator. Sorry, thanks. Anything else tonight? Jennifer. Um, yeah, I, I guess I just, if, <clears throat> if there are uh, proposals at, at phase one that we feel are non-starters, like we knew right away that um, Rich, Rich Rushlow's um, proposal for the culvert was something that I went to Nate, he said it's on, it's on, the, on their radar schedule to be uh, put in at some point. And we basically said, okay, that's not a, a use for the ARPA funds. If we know that there are others that we all um, believe are, are non-starters, then um, what is the reason for not um, contacting those people and saying, okay, that's, we don't believe that that is going to be considered for use of ARPA funds now. Why, are we, why would we wait until phase two? Why not communicate and say, yeah, not, n no, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I, I agree. That's what I was trying to do with Laura, actually. I was, I was trying to just tell her that that proposal was not fundable until she decided that she wanted to do something else with it. But I think that's a good idea. The other thing that I think we can do to kind of appease people is to tell them, like, look, your proposal is not fundable. It doesn't meet the criteria. Like, we don't, we can't do it by 2026. You know, we don't have your budget, whatever, whatever the problem is with it or it's, you know, funding a staff person or, you know, if it's something that's clearly outside the box, I think then you can say, but, you know, we are going to give the list of de denied applications to the select board. So they will at least hear your, you know, idea in that sense. And that will, so I guess that's how I've been thinking, like we, we would appease people. Like we did, we told the select board that there was a proposal for another um, emergency rescue person or wh whatever, the, whatever the one was, you know. Can I recommend that we not use the term denied since we are not in a position to deny anything, but something like not recommended or uh, not 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 qualified or something like that. Um, just just as a way of expressing it. Maybe I think non-eligible is what I said to Laura today. It's not eligible for funding because it didn't meet the criteria as it stood. Well, this is what I was trying to get at when we went through proposals like 11 through 15, which all st struck me as not recommended. I didn't hear anybody speak in favor of any of them, so I guess it's just a matter of, um, okay, do we now call people up or send them notes, or what? how do we uh, deal with that? I mean, I think if this committee decides they can't move forward, we should just get in touch with them right away, like Jennifer's saying, and just say, you know, we, we have the proposal for this, that, or the other reason it's not eligible for funding through ARPA. Well, send your idea to the select board. I agree. If we do that soon, it then gives people an opportunity to revise or rethink their proposal in a way that aligns with the, the purpose of this project. We, we may need to have a uniformity, though, in how we do that. In other words, if I go off and call somebody or write a note using some terminology and somebody uses different, we should maybe agree on some fundamental, basic, um, non-inflammatory way to say this doesn't meet the criteria of, uh, and just leave it fairly simply. Well, that's true. But, you know, when we're talking about Randy Clark's, I think people, you know, immediately thought about the fact that putting, spending money on personnel that we're going to be over. But then Seth brought up the great idea, you know, that maybe he, 
in talking to him, there are some other needs for that type of a project that would meet the criteria. So to go through today and, and, and say no without contacting, contacting them and talking to them about it, about whether they would like to rephrase it, the fact that the way it's written right now we probably wouldn't approve it because it, it doesn't meet the criteria. But you could, is, is there some something else associated with this project that, that would meet it? I think we should give them the opportunity to, to do that. Now, buying the property next door might not be quite the same way, but I think we should leave it now that um, we contact everybody before we start phase two, before our next meeting, and have some kind of a discussion with them. And and how that discussion goes, I you know, all depends on you know how you approach it with them, and if if they're willing to reconsider, you know, and and. You always run the chance that people will disagree with the fact that it's not eligible, but you know that's going to be the bottom line. Anything else? Shall we call it an evening? That's a motion, right? That's a motion. Okay. Motion we'll see you in Feb. We'll see you in February, and I and I think, you know, if you have any questions when you're talking to people or about how to talk to them, you know, let let's uh, discuss this on email or just calling somebody. Yeah, could I? What I think would be really helpful is we see these proposals, Jen sends them out to all of us, <clears throat> and then we don't talk about them at all until we get together, and then we have trouble hearing people, and they're in different locations. It would certainly be helpful to me, at least, just to hear what people think about some of these proposals as they see them, just to generate the thought process of maybe there's someone sees merit in this that I don't see, and so forth. Because I don't think we should have to wait a month before we discuss these things. I think just you know, reply all to the group, keep it informal, don't spend a lot of time, but, but you know, share your thoughts on it. And it, it, I think it really could speed up the process a little bit. Do we run the risk of running afoul of an open meeting law by doing too much of this? I think we do. Um, the way we get around that with the select board is they um, want, they will one at a time or two at a time come talk to me um, and kind of, and I'll, I'm, I will relay messages. So there, there are ways around it um, for sure. Anything else before I say good night? Okay, good night. Thank you all. Happy skiing, Bill. Happy skiing, Bill. Thank you.